everybody, thanks for stopping in the garage today. And we have a really cool Craftsman LT2000 here. It's just a beautiful, <clears throat> beautiful tractor. I went over the whole thing. And so we're gonna focus in this video, this episode on this nice Craftsman Spriggs, Craftsman IC 17.5 horsepower overhead valve. So in this one, I'm gonna go over the valves on it and show you guys what I found an oops in this one, but we're gonna deal with the problems that were, well, that I inherited on this tractor. <clears throat> and we're gonna go over the valve lash and all that, and I'll show you guys what I do to deal with the valve cover and the seal and seal it up properly. Um, and then also, you might wanna come back and check out uh, the masterclass on this where I go over the whole thing. Um, it includes everything that I'm gonna do, or if you find some of the other videos in that series, probably be in this folder on the carburetor and the deck and a whole bunch of other things that I did to this uh, full tune-up tweaking um, so all of that will be in here and hopefully uh, you guys stick around for all that and come back for it and I will see you there let's get started these bolts were really tight and oh, one of them was red you seeing that? I know, just trying to, some of it's a little blown out from the light. I want enough light so you can see, but you know, shiny objects. So why is that one red? Is that quarter 20, was it? They were really tight. And I just gave this a little chick with my screwdriver. Oh yeah, okay. For sure, right, somebody this might be what's leaking, and look, oh, hold on, I'm getting cold. All right, I gotta get to this now. So all that gook in there. Anyway, we're gonna clean this out. Here's the mistake people make with these things. Um, that, that gasket did nothing, right? Except go inside the motor like the other one. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna clean this off, make sure it's flat and true. You over tightened it too. And so by over tightening, uh, you're, you're pushing everything out and in and nowhere where it needs to be. So first step is we're going to clean all this off, get all this gook off, clean it off good, no grease on it, no remnants, make sure it's flat and straight. And then I'm going to lay a bead down. I only have the high temp red stuff. I got to get more of the black. I keep forgetting. Um, I had a hard time finding it for a little while. I think it's around again. Anyway, we're going to lay a bead down, a light bead with my finger and I'll show you and then we're going to set it to dry for about a half hour or more depending on how long we take doing other things all right it's got a skin if it doesn't skin up this when it starts to skin that becomes your gasket soft but and then when you put it on you, you don't over tighten it you, you snug it and best thing to do is to come back the next day and you know finish it up just, you know, tighten it a little bit more. Snug it, right? You're not, this guy had the thing. Yeah. So don't do, don't do, don't be this guy, right? He was almost there. Apparently, you know, somebody knew something, but this is how you get into trouble. All right, I'll be back in a minute. Yeah, see, this is what I worry about, right? I can see one here. This is gasket material. Let me get that little rag. We're dripping back on the exhaust again. I'm trying to avoid that. So this is gasket material. That's what I'm worried about. And there's more in here. This is like liquid. Yuck. Well, this is really, this stuff is really soupy, guys. Let me get in there and get that out. I think we're going to dump the oil right now while it's still a little bit warm. Right? And yeah, we're gonna dump the oil now while it's a little bit warm. And then you can see all that in there. What we need to do is clean this off. This isn't done right, and I'll show you in a minute. All right, I checked over the valves. Now, so I think what's happening is, I mean, I even found RTV up here, right, on the rocker arm. So this is what it looks like. Um, valve cover looks like with just a light bead. Now it's been sitting drying, it's got to skin up. And without that skin, it's that skin. Like you could put this, you could never really get a good successful seal 
by putting RTV on, putting this cover on, and then over tight, you know, slamming the bolts down. That's never going to work. So what I do is I get, like I said, I get everything clean, super, super clean, and I lay a nice bead on with my finger. If you see any area that looks a little translucent, like like you can see a spot where like the cover is come showing through, a little bit more on, get a nice even coat, put it aside for about a half hour. Today is really warm, it's a really hot day and dry. So this did not take long. We're gonna put this on a little bit. Now I went over everything on here, okay? I, the camera wasn't on for some reason. Cause I got a lot of interruptions today and, uh, and I'm going over so much on the machine. So now we're just gonna look at the valves. So I often say you wanna, if you're gonna be doing valves on an engine, there's got to be a reason for it. Why would you? You wouldn't just do it. It's a lot of work to do. So you would want to do it. Um, like for me here, I you know, pick this thing up. It's an unknown. Uh, it's a number of years old, and I want to go through the motor. It's, it was burning oil, probably leaking from that poor seal here. Um, you don't want to go over everything and say you buy a, a, a machine like this used. You, you want to go over it. Or you bought it new and that was years ago and you can't even remember. And, and, you, and you know, you're like, well, I haven't done this in a while. Take the cover off. Take the plastic covers off. They come off real easy, um, depending upon your model. This is well, this one I took off a while back. Like clean in here, right? Get all this cleaned out nice. Because remember, it's air, it's air and oil cooled. Okay, that oil is not just a lubricant, it is the transfer medium to get the heat uh, that's building up in the engine and get it into these fins and everywhere else and then the air comes in. And this guy too here, see the fins and they go in that cup direction. They need to be able to pull the air through. It has a ducting design, like this is a slightly newer 17 horsepower Briggs. So they got ducting, these shields are, Georgia shields, they're part of the ducting to capture the air so you want to get that all clean, and that's when you do your valves. That's like every, I don't know, three years, five years, you know, something like that. Like, like the, the manual, if you read your manual, it'll tell you. Uh, a lot of machines used to be like you did it in the first hundred hours, and then you were good to go for a really long time. But your manual will, will tell you. So this is a 10 millimeter, and I think it's a T20. And um, that's your, a lot of people call this centerpiece your adjuster. It really isn't, okay? The outer nut is the adjuster because the outer nut is actually part of the fulcrum, which is like a half of a, a, a sphere, which then the rocker arm is riding up against that, and this is riding in the center of the rocker arm, and that's your fulcrum, okay? So as you turn that in, you're reducing the clearance. As you turn it out, the outer, the outer nut here, that whole assembly is coming away, and you're increasing the clearance. That centerpiece is a stop. And years ago, if you're talking Chevy and some other stuff in cars, they didn't have anything like this. They were just like nylock or crushed nuts, and they grabbed the threads, and you just turned one way or the other, and it stayed there for a period of time, and then eventually it would go out of adjustment, and you'd have to do it again. Somebody invented lock nuts, which went either on the top or, in this case, uh, this is very much like, you know, modern locking nuts that you put on rocker studs for cars. So that's a locking nut, this center thing. It's a locker, it's a locking, excuse me, set screw is what it really is. People get that confused. I had, I had them on, well, I had them on my Nova until I sold it. Like now I have like, I'm naked. I don't have any cool cars. So let's, let's just check it out. So 18 is like the max all right so let me back up it's going to go it's it's point oh oh eight thousandths right so that's eight thousandths for the intake and thirteen thousandths for the exhaust all right and i'm going to read you out the metric equivalence in a minute so here's your intake coming down and it actually comes down to here this lower rocker arm and here's your exhaust and it comes straight out of this valve so we're gonna turn the motor over. Now I've got it set to TDC right now. So we have our magnetron here, and we got our our uh, magnet, okay, centered, be, you know, be, between the two poles of the magnetron. That's another nice thing about having 
the covers off because you just take the plug out and you can turn over by hand right none of this chicken over or sticking pencils in there you don't need any of that you don't need to do that so let's just turn the thing around and watch the event so we're going to turn it clockwise and you can see the cupping right of the fins so it's going to grab the air and pull it around all right here we go now what we should see is an exhaust event there it goes all right because it just fired all right it's going to get rid of those gases oh, here comes an intake charge here's your intake so it's sucking in fresh fuel mixture now it's going to come up and start to compress it and get ready to fire it and i see my magnet my magnet is over here and we're going to bring that magnet up right here, right in the center, so right here. All right, so let's take our eight thousandths, and it's eight thousandths or 0 0.203 millimeters, and shove it. So this is our exhaust, this is our intake. All right, that feels good. Maybe a little bit loose, could be a little bit tighter. We can go from eight to... 13 I think we'll tighten this one up a little bit and let's go I got I brought this one in this is 13 to 18 on the exhaust so I brought it to like 14 just to kind of like bring it in the middle so we'll stick our 14 yeah, it feels nice and tight it feels good all right so we're gonna do the same thing so to get to eight, I like to be a little tight. So I'm going to go to seven. I like a tight. I like it a little tight. Oh, well. So I'm going to grab a seven. And then a lot of this is feel. That's why you have so much of a... It doesn't feel too bad. So what we're going to do is... We're going to loosen up this whole assembly. Now, you cannot turn out this lock nut. You're not going to be able to do it, right? It's locked in there. It's jammed. It's a jam nut. Don't try it because you'll break it. So turn the outer nut. Loosen it up, lefty-loosey. Now, we want to bring it in a little bit. So I want to reduce the clearance. To do that, I want to be able to drive that outer nut, the fulcrum, in a little bit more than it was. And if I were to just turn it back the same way, you know, to tighten it right now, it would wind up pretty much back where it was. So to make it go in a little bit more, we need to turn this locking nut out just a C here, like that. And then bring the whole assembly back in. And let's test it. Could go a little bit more. All right, I'm going to loosen it up a little bit. I'm going to then turn left counterclockwise or loosen that jam nut just a little bit and then bring the whole assembly in to tight. Yeah, I went a little too far. It's very temperamental. Like These are not particularly good. So now to correct that, loosen it up. I'm going to turn that locking piece in as soon as it allows me a little bit more so it doesn't go in as far. Well, I think I went too far. It, it's so temperamental. Let's tighten it up. That's close. Get the rest of the way. Yeah. Let's feel it with an eight. It's very temperamental. You're going to sit and fuss with these. Yeah, the 8 feels good. That's why I did it to the 7. All right, a little bit more. All right, now it's locked in. It took up all the clearance. Yeah, see? That's perfect. It's so temperamental, guys. It's just a matter of feeling it and having a bit of practice. If you don't get it right, do it again. All right, so I'm going to make sure this is all cleaned out in there. And uh, um, I'm going to put the cover on, and I'm not going to lock it down or anything because it's only been sitting for uh, maybe an hour or so. Put it on loose. Just, you know, thumb it down. Tighten it a little bit. 
walk away tomorrow, I'll come back and I'll, I'll just cinch it, you know, the cover down a little bit more. Uh, and then it'll be, we'll be done with it, all right? And I'll move on to the next thing. I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks for stopping in Archer's Garage. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button, guys. Please, help, you know, it's, we're building a channel together. And leave a comment, all right? I'll see you guys in the next one.